put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Love and Rage or in Danish Vanvity for Elske Mood Review and there it is starting with the plot Daniel is a very talented piano student and loves Sophia, the talented cello player, but he is terrified by the thought of losing her and accuses her of seeing another man. Everybody says he is wrong, but the suspicion grows, as does an uncontrollable side of Daniel. On plot. I'm going to be completely upfront, not going to waste any time. I love this film. When I first watched it, I considered it a 10 out of 10. That may have been in part having just watched and still being like complete. I still love it, but now on rewatch, I'd, I'd say 8 out of 10. Same thing with Merck. And I do think this one works better, but I went into my issues with Merck and my video on that. Now, I watched this film in the theater in its initial run. I forget if it was a trailer, seeing the title on my theater's website, and, you know, figuring, well, that sounds like something I might be interested in, or what it was, but the moment I found out it existed, I knew I had to watch it, and I loved it start to finish. I do have a few problems, see twice in the description box, the latter one having spoilers. Now, the original Danish title translates directly to Madly in Love. I'm not sure why they didn't go with that, but a number of these English version titles of Danish movies are strange. I I mean, I, I figure, oh, maybe there's some other movie called Madly, and I tried to do an IMDb search, and there are, like, things that are called something like that, but they're not, like, huge profile, big American, like, let's, let's say that, for example, I, I believe The Piano Teacher, you know, in its original, in, in the original language, translates more directly to the piano player and yeah they were like people are gonna think this is the Polanski movie and that's not we don't yeah th those are two very different movies both you know I love both although I I have only watched the Polanski one once so it is possible that again I was a little too you know excited about it right but I'm, I'm not sure I'm necessarily gonna do Polanski. I'm not. I, I don't know that I really have the chops for for handling him. But he's done some really amazing movies, and then that one really terrible thing is the human being that no one should ever do under any circumstance. I mean, say what you will about I forget his name, but the dude who directed Jeepers Creepers one and two and Clown House and such. Yes, what he did was horrible. But he took his punishment. He did the time. He didn't run away from the police. Anyway, now the yes. To to get back to the the tagline translates to when love becomes dangerous, and the DVD has a teaser and a trailer, both of them excellent, and also has subtitles in Danish for the hearing impaired, which I always appreciate. I always miss stuff when there aren't subtitles. Now, the movie is 95 minutes long or 91 minutes without end credits. There's a good amount of music, mostly classical, satisfying that for the audience too. A lot of this scene performed, not quote unquote merely soundtracks. So that, you know, that really is when, when you go to a movie with that that is about people who play, you know, just short professionally, you know, they're 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 taking they're they're training to become professional, basically. It, it'd be nice if you actually do get to hear them play a bunch, and yeah, in this you actually do. So a neo-Nazi ran over twenty people and killed one. It was her own fault. 
Even Mr. Burns didn't get away with using that excuse. And I agree with what Steve Shine said in his most recent video, as I often do. You know, the, the one about, what was it? It's, it's defensiveness, not division, that'll tear the atheist community apart. So, something along those lines. You know, I think the phrase, don't you know who I am, makes you sound like an ass, except when used tearfully as you're talking to an aging relative who's got serious Alzheimer's. And James Cameron's words on Wonder Woman prove that even great artists sometimes just don't get it. Excuse me. to be better at remembering doing that. Good thing it doesn't take very long. Characters. I don't really know the people who made this from anything else except, of course, I'm probably going to butcher this, but Dijon Kuchik, I, I think is, you know, the national treasure from another nation. I know some people are bothered by nudity and sex scenes in movies. Some on principle, especially when it goes this far, definitely. A lot of the time it's there to attract people specifically looking for that, but here it's vital. The sex scene is intimate, doesn't feel like it's porn. We understand how he falls in love and feels possessive of her sexuality. Now look at the look on his face when he sees her leave for somewhere else, maybe someone else, in a sexy skirt. And I know this is not the same everywhere, but yes, here in Denmark, sometimes the girl has sex with the guy very shortly into the meeting, and it can then lead to a monogamous relationship. That doesn't mean that they're not going to, you know, the, the, the movie makes it completely clear that the idea that she's not monogamous is in Daniel's head. There's no, it's, it's like the hunt with, with, you know, which deals with a man accused of child molestation. It's completely clear from the movie that it didn't happen. The what what people are suspecting didn't happen. And it's about you know, so so that the audience don't spend any time you know, trying to figure out, well, did it really happen? No, it's about the people who think that it happened and why and such. And Daniel's mother has casual sexual relationships with men who she clearly isn't interested in once the sex part is over. They do try to be nice to Daniel. And Daniel and his mother are too dependent on one another, especially after the father's suicide. And she recognizes a lot of his father in Daniel, and their close relationship hurts them both, holds them away from other people who would be healthier for them to spend time with. I love the dialogue. The characters actually express what they feel and why, and they talk like real people. I, it's such a relief from the kind of Hollywood dialogue that works to forward a thing and that sounds and it's quotable and such. Jealousy. Not everyone gets jealous, and I've seen people who don't, or at least by then haven't, experienced jealousy, both underestimate the passion with which it can be felt, and having trouble understanding why it is felt at all, and I think you may be sensing a theme here that I really hate when people put down other people's strong feelings, that really, there's, there's maybe one instance where I feel like really strong feelings should, should, or one type of instance, I suppose you should say, where I feel like someone's really strong feelings don't actually, shouldn't actually be particularly respected. And it's just when rich people are motivated to just keep amassing wealth, even as it's destroying other people's lives, because somewhere deep down the, the rich person has some, you know, yeah, some some fear that he'll suddenly 
be in a really bad situation if he doesn't have an insane amount of money or the like. Yeah, sorry, not sorry. I, I really don't care. I, and I hope that your money is taken away from you and that you have to live on almost nothing so that you could maybe start to empathize with the people whose lives you've destroyed. That is the only situation. Well, that's, I, perhaps there are others, but I'm not sure at this exact moment, I'm not sure. Uh, there, there's any other situation where it's like, okay, well, let's see if we can figure out, you know, I, I mean, there, there are situations where I'm like, okay, they, that person feels that real strongly, but that means that we have to be careful that they don't get into a situation, you know, I'm sure, you know, a, lo a lot of murders, a lot of violence is committed because of someone's strong feelings. I'm not saying in that case we should coddle them. I'm saying in that case we should be like, okay, this person has strong feelings, and might get violent, we should, you know, people shouldn't be alone with them, for example, and there, there should be, you know, we should watch out for them getting violent. But with rich people, yeah, no, just, you know what, other people can take care of your money for you, then you don't have to worry. To get back to it, yeah, personally, I'm not a jealous type. My partner's previous and future partners don't upset me. I haven't been cheated on, but if I were or thought I were, which I also haven't, I feel betrayed, yes, but not on the, on the level that some feel. I wouldn't be enraged. I've dated a girl who has always had an easy time finding a new partner, and that didn't make me think that she was going to find someone new before we broke up. It just, I realized that you know, if we we didn't stay together forever, you know, for in the long haul, then she, you know, and, and she made this clear before we started dating. She she never, you know, she, she feels more comfortable being in a relationship, and that doesn't mean that she didn't care. And, yeah, that never bothered me, nor will it ever. But yeah, I'm big enough to admit that there are things I can't provide my partner with as well as others maybe could. And I understand that not everyone who cheats is in general a jerk. Not that anyone deserves to be cheated on or that it's ever actually okay. But you know, if you do stay with someone who has or you might or you think might cheat, they probably have other problems with impulse control. You know, if they're willing to work on that and you're a very patient person, maybe you together can improve their impulse control, but do know that that's a problem they have and it might affect you in other ways. Maybe they take irresponsible loans or... yeah. And I'll admit that I didn't always understand jealousy. Now, part of why it's so strong for some people is that the loss of a romantic partner can bring forth instinct. You know, keeping in mind that Keep in mind that the following is all in extreme conditions that our instincts were developed and honed under. It's, it's important to remember that when someone feels strong but irrational feelings today, society has developed much, much, you know, very, very fast since humanity started forming society. Our brains take much longer to develop and change in, in the core like makeup and really to function in society everyone has to have some level of control over you know between what they feel and what they do based on that you can't just the moment you feel threatened use violence you know you can't just see something you want and just take it you know the the which you know in in nature if you know, if you see some food that isn't, you know, yeah, you go and take it because it might, you know, if you if you keep letting food go by, you know, yeah, you might end up starving to death. But anyway, and with that said, I do of course have sympathy for people who are so poor that they can't afford food, and I don't think that you know, it it shouldn't particularly be punished to steal 
to to eat you know if if it's not yeah if if they don't have any other option you know you know quote the reverend lovejoy it's it would be wrong if they put something on the bread but yeah you know our instincts haven't changed much and it's up to us to keep them under control instinctively losing one partner may mean we never get another that can mean the lion dies with you which could mean that an entire species won't survive so when someone uses violence on account of jealousy it may be born out of a genuine fight or flight this is life-threatening kind of instinct and this film admits that and it's by far the best I've seen on the subject and I'm not saying you know there are probably ones that are better that I just haven't watched but I doubt I'll love them as much as I love this. And far too many of the other films about jealousy are psycho characters whose feelings are unrequited thrillers. And I do love movies like The Hand That Rocks the Cradle and have watched it countless times and will video review it if it's ever on sale. But we have more than enough of that subgenre of film. This is the only one that takes this approach that, again, that I've seen. And, and it's, again, it's just, it's so easy, it's so easy to say, oh, you know, there are people out there who are like crazy obsessive about love, but don't worry, they're never someone you want to be with, and, they're, and it's always unrequited, so people don't end up getting hurt by people who, you know, love, you know, to, again, to be fair, there are movies where it's a, a long-term partner who is, like, overly jealous, but Again, this is more like, you know, yeah, there aren't enough movies like this, or at least I haven't seen enough, which may just mean I haven't seen enough movies, because there is no such thing as having seen enough movies. But yeah, the, you know, this is the only one that takes this approach, and this is the only one where the concept is something that happens all the time. Again discounting the one where it's a long-term relation. Tons of people in romantic relationships fear their partner is unfaithful, even from pretty much right away. And we understand why Daniel feels it so strongly. Heck, she may legitimately be the only person that he'll ever be with, so it does genuinely feel very, yeah, very, very real. Now, Yeah, I copied in from Wikipedia on jealousy. Yeah, experts often believe that sexual jealousy is in fact a biological imperative. It may be part of a mechanism by which humans and other animals ensure access to the best reproductive partners. It seems that male jealousy and heterosexual relationships may be influenced by the their female partner's phase in their menstrual cycle. Let's see. Yeah, and a male is more likely to employ mate retention tactics if their partner shows more interest in other mates, and that's, or other males, rather. Couldn't see what I wrote. All right, small. And, yeah, the common experience of jealousy for many people might involve fear of loss, suspicion over anger about perceived betrayal, of self esteem and sadness over perceived loss. Certainty and loneliness, fear of losing an important person to another, and distrust. And yeah, you really get all of those here. And and really, if you simply cannot understand jealousy, you can watch this as an example of someone who has very little and who becomes obsessed with the one thing he has when he finds something special to him. And a lot of people can become very destructive when what little they have is threatened. You know, this is also what you know, Gamergate and and you know other anti-feminist morons. Again, I get it, but seek help. Don't try to tear down other people for. Yeah, I I get it. You know, I I, but but you can't. 
yeah, at the at the end of the day, you you have to just accept that you can't always get what you want, and sometimes sometimes you get what you need, but other people may have a greater need than you, and you can't just that's yeah, that's called being a snowflake. So problems. There we go. I have a few problems with this, but like so many of our other films, I or I have a few problems with this, not a few, but like so many of our other films, one problem is a lack of continuity. Yeah, in case you skipped right to, to this part of it, I am Danish, so yeah. One problem is a lack of consequences. Big plot moments are dramatic, but the characters don't change behavior in a way that makes sense and or they don't lose things because of because of it, which goes too far away from the otherwise largely re realistic style of the film. And that, you know, here I'm, I'm talking about this movie, but there are so many Danish movies I could be talking about. And it just, it sucks. But, yeah, it's just, it really, it's something that we need to get better at in our creative expression, in, in films and such. Now, an early scene has Daniel go to a club to meet Sophia, and he, he doesn't want to go. I guess I should just start saying Sophie if I'm going to keep saying Daniel rather than Daniel. He doesn't want to go to a club, especially not that one, but it's a place he can socialize with her and try to become her boyfriend. He takes a friend, Jacob, Jacob who doesn't have a girl there that he wants to get with and who really, really doesn't want to go. And literally, the friend, you know, yeah, Jacob says, weird music, huh, to which Daniel agrees, and he turns to Sophie, who, who couldn't hear that because of the music, and says, great music, huh? And obviously, this is to show that Daniel is putting his desire for her above what his friends want. Good idea. Problem is, the character pretty much disappears from the film after this scene. He's, he's part of an applauding crowd later on, but he affects nothing. And there's no, like... Dude, we haven't talked in like forever. And and to be No, actually really, it doesn't seem like they had much contact between the two, and it's like if I guess it's nice that he's still you know, he's still there to to applaud something that goes really well, but no, it just doesn't yeah. You know, and he only briefly appears before it. All he does there is say you never go out, which his mother had just said. He's also a little crass about getting them both laid, and it just really does not feel like these two people would intentionally spend time together if they didn't have to. They're just too different. And again, this is very much the two of them choosing to spend time together. It's it's not it doesn't come off as like Jacob feeling like Daniel needs his pity and just, you know, oh, if I'm not like like a spiral. You know, in that movie, you do get the sense that I forget every single character's name from that movie because it's been too long, but that, you know, the the more well-adjusted character feels, he kind of pities the, 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 the protagonist, and yeah, he's like, he's, he's watching out for him almost more than, than socializing with him. He's not, it's not as much that he really wants to spend time with this guy as much as like if if I don't he's gonna be completely alone and so and it doesn't feel like that with Jacob it feels it the movie plays it like they're just you know not necessarily best of friends but like acquaintances who sometimes go out and not only does Daniel barely ever go out but it's like no it, it just it doesn't feel like this this is it doesn't feel like that's how it would go, you know, and yeah, the, the, I think of, yeah, you know, if your character is, you know, only present in just a few scenes and changes nothing in the plot, you should probably just eliminate them entirely, you know, and, and really, yeah, like, like I said, you know, it shows that he's, he's putting his desire for, Sophie over you know over, over his over the wishes of his friends but he also he doesn't really seem like he has many friends 
So it, again, if if this was like if 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 Jacob showed up later in the movie and it was like I haven't seen you in forever, what's going on? Like in Ghost Something with with Scarlett Johansson and Daphne from the Scooby Doo movies. I want, I want wait no no not Daphne. Is Daphne the other? Yeah, I, you, I think you can maybe tell that, well, in, in the case of Spiral, that is a movie that I really care about. I guess I gotta watch that movie again. But, yeah, these other movies maybe aren't the, I, I like Steve Buscemi a lot in, in the, the Ghost Something movie. I do like Scarlett Johansson in, in other movies. But, yeah, the, the, basically, the, The, the the character just doesn't yeah you, they could easily have removed him yeah I'm not sure there's room for the character in the rest of the film so kill your darlings lose that you know decently made point and just remove the character entirely and one scene has Daniel and Sophie go Sophie go to a movie theater she's having a sandwich and there's a bouncer who won't let them in with her sandwich she tosses into the nearby garbage can. Then the bouncer says they can't go in. The movie's already started. And he also he says something like, oh, "You're not listening to what I'm saying." It's a movie theater. This is not like, you know, just what what does he think they're gonna like? Yeah. Anyway, and Daniel yells at him that he just told her to throw away her sandwich and loses his temper. You know. I, th I think that's all I should say for the scene, but what, what happens in the scene? I have a few issues with this. I'm going to talk specifically about Danish theaters. I don't know the rules in other countries. I don't recall ever being being to one in another country. In spite of the fact that you know, when I was a kid, we traveled all the time, mostly because they wanted to, my parents wanted to travel, and the fact that I absolutely despised travel did not really seem to bother them. The, the the as you say mostly my mother I think my father d did you know sympathize but nothing really happened anyway you know Danish movie theaters I've been to since I was seven or probably even sooner not equally much every year but since then and without much of a real like pause between just, yeah first off. I have never in my life seen a theater with a freaking bouncer. And related, I don't know any Danish theater that would turn someone away at the door because the movie's already started. Yes, that's rude and it sucks for the other people, but people go in and out of theaters that they have tickets for. Are you telling me this guy wouldn't let someone back who in who went to use the bathroom? Is the theater showing psycho? A second, no one except maybe a child would think for a second that they could take actual food into a Danish theater. If you want candy, popcorn, soda, the like, you can, but you do have to buy it at the theater, not bring it from the outside. But of course they don't want actual food in there. If she drops it, it'll be gross to clean up. It might smell and bother others. Just one person? Well, if they make an exception for her, others will want to as well. I get that Daniel's overreaction is part of the point, but why was Sophie surprised? And again, the scene doesn't really have consequences. He becomes enraged, but she doesn't like sit him down and explain that he needs to keep his temper under control. It, you, you, she kind of does convey that he scared her, but yeah, you know, she doesn't talk to her friends about it. And if you cut it, it would change nothing in the plot. You know, he he does spend a little time in I forget what it's called in English, but you know, not not like jail, jail, but like you know, like overnight kind of thing. Just you know, that's that's basically is that the the next time they talk, they almost immediately go to him moving in with her. You know, he could have hurt someone, and he gives her pause, but not enough for them to not to move in together. This is and and just if the movie had just swapped the order if if she if they had moved in together 
and then that happened and then she was like well I mean either she actually goes to say I, I maybe we moved in together to again spiral or the 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 or or possibly she would say well I mean we did already move in together we should try to you know make it work it's yeah you know but but not just yeah there 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 should be some consequences to that and it just yeah actually to be fair a few months back i was at the the bus station because in denmark we don't hate public transportation it actually it really works well and anyway and a bunch of i i guess they just came from like class or something but yeah a, a bunch of the the of of students like like I don't know, 17 year olds maybe walked into a bus all of them carrying like I, I'm not sure if it was Starbucks but like you know some kind of coffee and like within moments they walked back out and I heard one of them say they won't let us keep these <laughs> I don't know I don't it's rare let's go with that it's extremely rare that people don't realize that you can't go into a movie theater or a bus or the like I mean it's not like it's yeah it's it's not unreasonable if if like 10 different people had 10 different you know smelly foods in there yeah it would be completely intolerable there's there's only so much air and you know you pack together a few dozen people like that it's already not hugely comfortable but you know it's fine as long as no one's yelling smelling you know yeah but not with yeah and takes us to critics professionals or pros rather it did occur to me that some people might think that when I write critics pros in the description box that box that it might appear as though it's pros as in pros and cons and yeah what can I say I try to keep these short and writing out professionals every single time yeah now the the following is in Danish so I'm gonna have to briefly translate anything I quote from Danish first. I decided not to sit down and translate it word for word. It's like what was it, eight hundred words or something. And I wasn't sure how much it would read aloud from reading it before recording this, so yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Daniel is just about to make a career, and let's see. Siren Melville, who plays Daniel, has a yeah, I'm not entirely sure how best to put that, but yeah, the the charm is taken over by madness, and the this pained expression on his face really takes over. And 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 he points out that maybe you know perhaps Sophie is a little too just normal and straightforward it's which is another problem that a number of Danish movies have if if well this movie is really about this one character then a bunch of other characters are kinda gonna be just straightforward and not that interesting because it's really about this one which is I mean it's not like we don't know how to make dramas with 
multiple really compelling characters. I mean, I realize it's drama comedy, but I can't believe I don't remember them. It's been too long. Um, dude has has a desert eagle goes up and shoots a cow because he thinks it's staring at him funny. There. Everybody who knows the movie now knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think my memory of, of things that I've not been thinking about for a long time. It's, yeah. He says that Charlotte Fitch, who I'm almost certain plays the mother, is bearable, and I, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't think. Again, I don't know her from anything else. I think she's great in this. And yeah, he says uh, that Dejan Kuchik is, you know, exuberant. He's really just, yeah, glowing. And the the script is kind of sensationalist in, you know, use the great tragedy and is at times almost, you know, almost goes beyond what is credible. And, and the director actually mostly, it's, it's his day, debut as a director, he's mostly an editor, and he does an amazing job, but I will say, excuse me, I did not know that before reading this Danish review, I will say, thinking about that, you can tell, there are a few places where he doesn't quite, he, he makes some choices that maybe someone who was more seasoned wouldn't, and at times it does hurt the movie somewhat. Again, love the movie. And Thor. Okay, seriously, I do love Thor. But anyway, it's it's the pop culture. I, I can't help it. And I'm a yeah, I guess I didn't Going on to critic users, I'm not entirely sure. I guess I forgot to say that. The let's see. It, yeah, this is something that the the Daniels. You know, he he has the the musical talent, but also perhaps the the madness of his father, who took his own life a year prior to the events of the movie. And Daniel is played by Sir Melville, brilliantly holding the tension throughout the film. Dijan Kuchi is, as always, doing a brilliant job. Another one of these roles that you have to figure out if he's good or he's bad. That's quite true, yes. Is it really you, you? There are times where he seems like he's, yeah, yeah. It's, and that's that's something he just does incredibly well. I think, I think it's his eyes. He just, he's. I'm, I'm not. That's that. That probably sounds racist. It's what he does with his eyes. It's what it's it's how he performs when he's playing a character where you're not entirely sure if he's a good guy or a bad guy. He. It's it's he can kind of come off as if he's just passionate, but other times seem like he's actually he's there's there's something sinister going on or something. It's yeah he does a great job, and he's not he's he sometimes plays characters that are not at all that were where they're very clearly very clearly good or very clear very clearly bad. I I I did look it up. I forget what it's called, but there's this movie where this Danish movie where he plays like a terrorist. I didn't watch the whole thing, but there's just there's this scene, and it's like up to some teenagers to stop him because yeah, sometimes we make movies like that too. It's not only 
America that puts out. Yeah. And there's like a scene where one of the kids says, you're like, you're actually Israeli, aren't you? How did you know that? Ah, because you're, you're using an Uzi. And it's like, this is, you know, yeah. And, and a teenager might recognize, you do know other, other groups use Uzi. It's, it's actually, it's a fairly good gun. It's not like something you only use if like, and anyway, yeah, the, the, in that, he's clearly a bad guy. And there's no, like, you know, when, when you look into his eyes, there's no, okay, this is the bad guy. And, you know, of course, he played something like that because he's foreign. And, yeah. Now. The film gives a good depiction of a troubled mind and extreme jealousy. An illness which might be very severe and could lead to tragic consequences. An interesting take on the genre. Now. And going over my old text review. Yeah, I, I actually, yeah. The, there were not many other people in the theater. I, I might have already mentioned, I watched it the night it premiered here. And yeah, I wrote, you know, hopefully word of mouth will spread. A masterpiece so tight and filled to the brink with material with an immense amount of it being hinted at yet without being heavy. By the way, I should say, you know, I mentioned that we don't have a scene where like Sophie is, you know, talking with her friends and like, you know, to be fair, really the entire movie is from Daniel's perspective. You don't see any scene that isn't him seeing that scene. And the, and this is actually incredibly effective. So, yeah, you know, if if something like that were to happen, it would basically be either he him seeing her talking with her friends, or her telling him that she talked with her friends. But nevertheless, that could still have been there. And The pace is spot on. This is often intense, but never overwhelmingly so. And it handles the delicate balances required incredibly well. And I wrote nothing is too much or less than it needs to be. There are maybe a few things, but almost nothing. The plot's magnificent, develops masterfully throughout. And you may be able to predict occurrences in this and find society that their impact is unbelievably strong and real. It's a remarkably talented storyteller. Directing and writing is excellent, effective, engaging, powerful. Cinematography and editing are amazing. It's rare to see such a firm grasp on what can be done with this medium, what can be achieved with a camera. Build up and establishing of the moves beyond reproach. And then casting are perfect. Every performance and every role, no emotion is over, under or overplayed. And. And the sound is impeccable in the music, rather important part of this, consists of well composed score and good choice of music going out. Almost completely credible, the events of the people's behavior. And most you can contest minor detail, then try from this as a whole. Again, I already brought up a few exceptions I have to that. There is some humor and doesn't try too hard, nor is it dwelled on. It's captured so many little moments and truly really gets into the humanity of it. And it is not a film for everyone, and you know, not everyone that can see it will enjoy it. And yeah, very little of the film can be referred to as fun. It's deeply serious and very dark. And and the violence is very unglamorized, disturbing content. And 
this. Yeah, that covers that. So, moving on to thoughts. Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Notes taken during film during viewing. The opening sequence is so tense, and really, before you're certain that you're seeing a concert where, concert where he performs, it almost feels like Daniel's being escorted to prison or something. And then he wakes up. Was it a dream? Were we seeing a glimpse of events to come later in the film? And you know, we meet La Loss, and he, you know, she has sex with him. But then in the morning, she's passive aggressive towards him. And Daniel does try to be nice to him, even though it clearly bothers him that he can hear them having sex during the night. Which was actually, I'm going to bring up Repulsion later on. That also kind of reminded me of, of Repulsion, of you know, her lying there, bothered, clearly bothered by hearing the, the sister having sex. Yeah, it's, it's pretty clear that, you know, they're, they're Repulsion and the piano teacher <clears throat> Excuse me. Were movies that they took a lot of inspiration from, and and that's also maybe some. Sometimes Danish films really carry their inspirations on their sleeve, and that's maybe a little bit. But I will say it doesn't feel like you know it's a completely different movie overall than you know the the than either either of those movies, and the. Yeah, they 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 depict very different people, and it's yeah they're they're very yeah they're they're about people who've had very different experiences and have very different are in very different places. If anyone can, it's it's you from the AR booth. Juilliard, you're ambitious. I like the, the little thing there that's like, you know, it's it's almost a, who do you think you are? Do you really think you can live up to that? And, and yeah, that's that's maybe part of the thing, you know, it's almost like he's going to be the, the teacher who has no faith in, but then later he does really try to help him a lot and it's it's a good kind of you you're not entirely sure if you trust him and Daniel isn't entirely sure if he can trust him and Daniel you know this this is not the first time he he knows who Pierre is you know but this is the first time he really gets a chance to like work with him and to be taught by him and yeah the the you know, the the initial encounter has this kind of yeah, where he you know, and, and really, I mean it's it's almost like the the I, I remember someone putting that out about storytelling, I wanna say it's called, by Tatsalans, that it's only when we hear the the idea really challenged that we stop to think, wait, really? I could he really? That's that's that is extremely prestigious. Very very few people actually get in, and it's like you know. In this case, at the, at the start of the movie, not much later, but yeah. Man, I gotta watch that again too. Sometimes I forget. I literally I have, I have hundreds of movies on DVD. I I really gotta remember to actually watch the ones I love more times. I've been trying to do that more recently. But there's room for improvement. And 
yeah, the, these early parts of the movie really make me incredibly glad I'm completely done with final exams. And I'm not even someone who gets, like, all that nervous or tongue-tied or the like. See, if you didn't have to see the person or persons writing notes while you're performing and doing the thing you're having the exam in, maybe we wouldn't get so nervous. You have to work on those nerves, you know, and, yeah, that's... <laughs> that's almost, like the the what the movie is about you know he has to work on those nerves and that's why it went wrong for your father and we and he does agree to to work with him. yeah and we'll destroy you too if you're not careful and you know Gucci Hero comes off so much more confident compared to In China They Eat Dogs and you know in both movies he plays it just right it's really because in that movie he is someone who does not have a lot of confidence and in this you know yeah he's this a, a lot of people look up to him and he you know he knows his stuff and he knows that he knows his stuff and you can really see why Excuse me, why Daniel falls for Sophie? You know, excuse me, the, the camera is falling for her as well. It's it's like with with you know Amazing Spider-Man with, with Peter and Gwen. It really that yeah. The the and it's also it it could so easily have been like trying to sell you on Sophie as like this, you know unbelievably hot like you know that, that that's what it is but instead it's this I mean she's almost like the girl next door she's she's very normal and I don't you know she's she is attractive but she's attractive in that she's not like she's not trying really hard or like dressed up to, to really you know pick up, you know, and we do see she later on she does dress in, you know, a more sexualized way. But yeah, the movie understands that it's not, you know, I mean, he does desire her definitely, but it's it's almost like this kind of intimacy and like yeah, he's you know he sees her and he's not like oh I gotta hit that. He's like I. I have to be close to her, you know, it's, and, and that's, you know, it's, it's puppy love, really. We're making an exception, and he gets his big chance, you know, and already we're told that he's getting what amounts, what almost amounts to an, an audition for Juilliard. The stakes are high and well established already. I have to admit, it really looked like at least some of the playing was actually them, but I mean, it, it, the, the credits list, you know, stand in hands, so I guess it's just like, I mean, I guess if they filmed it with almost the exact same camera movement and then filmed it once with the actors and filmed it once with the actual pian pianists, I almost said pianists, and, and then edited that together really subtly, I guess that's what... I don't know, it, it really looked incredibly convincing. And he and we recognized the shoes and it's like, where's she headed? What's what's going on behind those pretty eyes? You know. Again, it could so easily I've seen so many movies where it is like, oh look at how hot she is. And she wants to bang her. Don't you want to bang her? And it's just that's that's not at all what this is, you know, and that easily and, and I'm sure the movies like yeah, you know, there, there are movies like that where it is, he just, he wants to have sex with her over and over, and it's that, but, yeah. Is there a death note in that bag of chips? And, you know, he's figuring out what to wear, and practices what to say, and tries to seem, you know, tries to make it not seem rehearsed, and, yeah. And he's really nervous when approaching her, and the filming and editing really captured the social anxiety when he's in the room with the others, in addition to Sophie. He wants to be alone with her. He's not used to socializing with so many people. And it's not, 
the, the movie captures that it's in his head, basically. You know, it's not that, the, you know, they're not, like, treating him like an outsider or something. You know, they're, yeah, come on in. You know, you play too, and it's like, you know, yeah, it's not, it's, it's just how he feels about what's going on. It's not that the movie actually, yeah, you know, And, you know, they say, no, no, you, now it's your turn to play for us. And she says, you know, only if Daniel does too. And, you know, their duet is what in many movies would be a dance or having dinner together. You know, that is where they really, they really hit it off. And it really, and yeah, it's, it's so smart to have it as a duet instead. And, and I'm not saying it's, it's better than those other movies where it is something else but I'm saying it fits better in this movie that it is a duet and and again if if this was filmed by incompetent people it wouldn't feel like it was that important it, you know it it could easily just feel like oh there's two people playing instruments together you know it's it's not you know this kind of thing does happen all the time you know it's it's not always like the most important thing in the world to one of those people. It's, uh, yeah. And then, you know, suddenly he bolts and, you know, he's in the van, man, you play well, and he vomits, and that's, yeah, that's, that's Danish humor, that kind of, you know, she's like hitting on him and giving him compliments, and he's vomiting, and it's, yeah, pretty funny. And, you know, the morning after, and he's, you know, he, looks at her legs and the yeah can't you stay for a little while and and I've already talked about the the sex and again perfect spot on they did it exactly right you know when lying on the bed and smiling he could play like the son or you know something of Nikolai Nikos I want to make new music I want to come with you know that's, that's such a yeah it is it's it's moving a little fast but it's still that's incredibly sweet and just the whole morning after scene is really intimate uh, again could so easily have been like her look it, I'm I'm not saying that there's there's not anything wrong with women being sexualized the important thing is that the woman herself has control of her own sexuality but it would have it would have been wrong for this movie for these characters for it to be like that it just yeah that's that's not what it you know he's not just interested in her sexually he does want to be with her not just for you know again this is in stark contrast to when when you look at the way daniel's mother is around lars after the you know the the morning you know it's it's clear that she doesn't really want you know, he's just he's just being nice. It's not like if if he had just said something stupid to Daniel, then it makes sense that she's passive aggressive. But yeah, just now. And you know, he's so happy going home after being with Sophie. And actually now that I think about it, you know, him, you know, he's like and you've got the birds, and then later in the movie, he's like kicking at the birds. So, I I didn't quite. I, th I think I did the first time, but yeah, just this particular viewing. Of course, that's connected. Like when when he's happy with her, it's like everything is wonderful and the birds, you know. But when he's not, you know, when when things are going wrong, it's like, you know. I mean, this is not. You know, it's it's one thing to be like annoyed and like you know maybe want to yell at the birds or something, but he's like kicking him. If if one of them didn't fly away fast enough, he could seriously injure it. You know, it's not it's not fun and games. It's it's really really, yeah. And again, it's not like sadistic. It's it's angry. It's it's he's he's not doing that because he feels good torturing something. He's doing it because he. He feels so angry, the rage, and he just, you know, has he 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 doesn't know what to do with that other than act it out. He doesn't, 
you know, because he hasn't felt it like this, he hasn't allowed himself to feel it before. And again, you know, plenty of people, you know, if you're a functioning member of society, you have to have your anger under control. You cannot use violence against other people, you know, or animals. Now. And, you know, he comes home and this is the mother and, you know, who, who is the, you know, I don't know how to say that. And it's Pierre and it's this thing of like, you know, at, at first he's not quite sure how that, you know, and yeah, at first he doesn't really want to accept it, but he does come to basically accept it. But then he starts wondering if, you know, if, if, she, if his mother stops being with Lars and then starts being with Pierre, might Sophie, Sophie stop being with him and then be with Pierre? And yeah. And I'm sorry, but it is inappropriate for her to date his teacher. You know, it's it's. <laughs> okay, let's let's hypothetically say that it doesn't affect any. You know. Let's say that that all three of them are completely professional and keep personal and private, you know, per, personal and private, personal, private, and you know, yeah, they they keep those two completely separate. That, that they keep the private life out of him playing and such. Let's say that Pierre recommends him for Juilliard, and then the you know one of the people looking over the recommendation says, but. This teacher is sleeping with the mother of the student and thinks, you know, well, that's why he's recommending and, and could really screw up his chances. So, yeah, it is. But, you know, I, I do think that the movie, did, you know, the movie isn't saying that it's not appropriate, I don't think, at least. And, again, it goes to, well, if his mother is going to date, you know, this is someone that he trusts and has to trust. And, yeah, it's, you know, but the, you know, the movie does really well at distinguishing the heartfelt but obsessive love Daniel has for Sophie with the casual trying to find happiness in the arms of a lover love his mother does feel for Lars and Pierre. You know, she's not like a slut or something, which, again, I don't think that exists. Uh, yeah, a woman should be in control of her own sexuality, but what she's doing isn't healthy. And yeah, it makes him wonder if other women have such casual sex and if other men or other women or men are interested in Pierre. I don't judge. And you know, we get a little backstory. And I'll admit this is maybe slightly exposition-y dialogue. You know, there was one review who's just hated the dialogue and I, there there's a little bit that isn't but yeah it's you know the you know you don't have to go to Brazil for Brazil for five years to get a life and how do you think it felt to leave my eight-year-old son with a madman but you know then him saying he wasn't mad you know that's excuse me that's a really good exchange there And you know he's already Daniel's already having trouble letting letting Sophie be with other people, and Pierre pressuring Daniel to Daniel to you know, play better, to play more well. Anyway, after Daniel sees him in a sexual situation, reminds me a lot of the piano teacher, where it's a female teacher and students saw her in a porn store, and vice versa. She saw him in a porn store. And then we have the bouncer scene, which I've, you know, already gone into. And, you know, they won't tell Daniel how long he's going to be staying there for. You know, that that at least would help a lot. You know, is it is it an hour? Is it 12? Is it two days? What, you know? And we see, you know, kind of claustrophobia. And, and his mother just says, you're not like Dad. And, you know, she... And then she goes in the shower and, and cries. Deep down, she she does recognize a lot of his father in him, but she can't she can't talk 
to Daniel about it. She just, yeah, she, she can't really confront it properly. Again, things might have gone a lot better if she had admitted, yeah, he really, he does have, you know, other people do dare tell him you have to work on your nerves and you have to watch out that you don't become too obsessive and but yeah if if he talked to a psychiatrist or something you know it's it's possible that he could get some help and you know when the movie ends with him in this institution you know i mean the, the movie makes sure to to show it's not like you know this real you know this, this is not one flew over the cuckoo's nest it's not it's a horrifying place but it's, that's that's really not the right way for him to, now for the rest of his life he's going to have to live with having killed someone you know and not like by accident in in rage and in passion but it wasn't like oh well they slipped no he and yeah now it's possible he'll never leave the institution where before it might have been well let's take some time at an institution you know medication treatment and then maybe he can become so normal that he will later be able to. And yeah, and you know, Daniel tells her, I just want to get out of here. You know, it is really early to move in with the romantic partner. And again, it just it does not how how can that be it it just it feels like the the like like there are almost two drafts of the movie and one of them didn't have the bouncer scene and the other did and they combined it and it happened to line up that the bouncer scene would be followed by the scene where they decide to move in together because it's just it's not that's not a very typical reaction it's it's it would be normal for her to pull a little back and say, you know, maybe, maybe we need to get to know each other better before we make such a permanent decision. Oh, no, not quite permanent, but, you know, having a child, that's a permanent decision, but but long-term decision, you know, it's, it's, I'm sorry, but seeing someone use violence doesn't immediately make you think, I should live with that person, you know. And I do want to, I, I so appreciate that the movie doesn't pull the crap that Spider-Man 3 does where, you know, the protagonist is as accidentally violent with his significant other. And it's, yeah. Man, that movie sucks. And, let's see. And, you know. Sophie says, a lot of us girls think he's hot. You know, not a lot of the other girls think he's hot. No, she says, you know, actually, come to think of it, later on when he says, you said you think he's hot, she says, I did I say that? I don't think I said that. So maybe he did, like, maybe when he, when she said, a lot of the girls that I talked to, think that Pierre is hot. Maybe he perceived that as a lot of us think that he's hot. That's I hadn't really thought about it until just now, but that that could very easily be that, you know, it, it could also be that she did say it and she didn't really think anything of it. The, yeah. Why is he surprised when I've, I thought it was the other teacher, but I guess it's the, the principal, because later on, he goes to see the principal, and that's her. When, you know, when she tells him the Juilliard people will be in the audience, Pierre already told him. I don't mind the movie bringing it up again. It's reminding the audience, telling us that it is indeed a really important piece of information. But why does Daniel sign with surprise instead of just saying, yes, Pierre told me? You know, it's, yeah. And, you know, Daniel's getting really possessive, and, you know, why are you putting on makeup? I think you look better without, you know, this is not, like, if, if it's a situation where the, yeah, you know, some guys, I personally thought that, you know, the girls I've dated have looked great without makeup, but, you know, I was never, yeah, you, you don't tell her 
after she's put on makeup, I think you should remove it. You just, you know, yeah, if he just said, I think you look great without makeup too, or something, but yeah, it, it, actually, it reminds me a little bit of like American Psycho when, you know, I, I brought this up in my video on American Psycho too, but where, you know, Patrick is like, I don't want to, I don't want you to wear that again, you know, oh, come on, you're prettier than that, you know, instead of just, yeah, it's, it's, they, they think that they should get to decide what the other person looks like. And, you know, he's watching her through the window, and, you know, and, and she sees him, like, for a second there, she's, like, it was weird, but then she tries to make, you know, make it be not a, a bad thing with, like, waving, and he doesn't wave back. It's actually kind of like an Everwood when, for spoilers, let's just say character X looks at character Y in a similar, albeit less creepy and obsessive scene. And it's actually, yeah, for people who know what I'm talking about, that's, that's really, really similar. They probably watched Everwood as well. And I realize I just admitted to watching Everwood. And, you know, Daniel's like going through her stuff, which I also feel like that that doesn't get brought up I feel like that you know she comes back I thought that she was gonna be like did you go through my stuff but yeah and yeah he denies looking through the window why are you always talking about Pierre That's such great acting from everyone involved and we see that the earlier bit we saw was something that happened later but now the tension has more background it means more when he you know when when Pierre is there and when we see Sophie sitting there and really the the I mean if you watch the trailer okay but if you didn't watch the trailer when you first saw the you know when yeah when you first see the the that scene that actually occurs later in the movie and you just, yeah, you see the girl sitting there. You might not think too much of it because, yeah, when you when you see the scene at the very start of the film, it doesn't really make a huge deal out of the fact that, yeah, she's there. And you might, like, recognize her when he then sees her in the elevator or whatever, but it doesn't mean as much until later. And... And, you know, he actually goes up to her, why aren't you wearing the necklace? And, you know, and, and she says, this is not the time to discuss some stupid necklace. And now the necklace is stupid. Which, again, I, yeah, thinking about it, that might not be what she said. That might be what he thought she said. She might have just said, you know, this is not the time to discuss the necklace or some, you know, but, when, but, but, to him, hearing her say something like that tells him, so she doesn't even care about the necklace? She's admitting she doesn't care about the necklace, you know. It's, yeah. And, you know, the concert has, like, the tension of a an actual life-defying scene, you know, like, it, and, and which, again, reminds me of, like, the business card comparison scene in American Psycho, you know, it's when, when again, if, if talentless people were making it, you wouldn't get anything out of it, but because it's so well done, technically so well acted, yeah, you actually, it, it's, it, it, I mean, it's, it's one thing that it affects the character so much, but that it also affects the audience, and you know the audience isn't watching the business card comparison scene and and like oh my god I I cannot believe he had a better business card, but we're like sitting there, what is he gonna do? What is he gonna do when this you know bothers? And and later on he does do something because of a too pretty business card, but yeah you know because at that point we already know that he's an incredibly dangerous person and we've seen it take nothing. For him to, yeah, actually get not necessarily violent but threatening. See, American Psycho I rewatched recently. 
cannot believe how amazing the movie is. And Jacob appears again. And, you know, he's he's doesn't do anything, but he's physically present. And Daniel can't stand watching the two dance. And again, in reality, it's it's not a big deal. But the way it's filmed, it does. You know, Pierre looks like he's trying to, you know, seduce her. It it comes off as like a yeah a seductive dance scene. And she looks so into it, and yeah, at the end of the day, that probably isn't what it actually looks like. If 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 the camera wasn't Daniel's eyes, if the camera was an objective camera, then that's almost definitely not what it actually looks like. But to him, that's what he sees, because Pierre is with his mother when his mother was just with someone else, and now, you know, yeah, the the it's so so nicely done and and then Daniel starts touching her while she's not awake you know the caressing the fa face to see if she's awake you know okay but then he starts undressing her and ag again it's yeah he feels possessive of her it's he's almost treating her as if the the like if it, as if she were like a, a doll for him to d decide what to look like, what to wear, and, and this kind of stuff, you know. And, like, if she had fallen asleep wearing, like, soaking wet clothing, and he's worried she'll catch a cold, in that situation, it would be okay, but, yeah, not, yeah. And he sees other hands touching her, very repulsion, and, yeah. And, you know, she says, Pierre left me, he met another woman, and immediately, you know, we know that Daniel's thinking, was it Sophie? And, and you know, almost to an extent, we, we almost catch ourselves, or maybe it's me, you know, thinking, wait, was it so? is it Sophie? That, yeah, really nicely built that, yeah, it, it feels like that's where the the it's it's going because I mean and it, we just saw them dancing together and she's like denying that it's happening but you know yeah that's a man's shirt and sure as heck is one of Daniel's where did you sleep last night why aren't you answering my calls you know and and again this is like yeah it's it's you you can understand why he feels that way, but it's it is not okay to treat you know yeah it's it's Daniel you don't own me I'm not one of your many toys he still got into Julia after walking away from Peter Gold after the you know the clear lack of self control you know. Right before he plays, he walks up and talks to his girlfriend in front of all these people. And then he walks away from Peter Gold, and he still got in. That's, yeah, I'm sorry, that is a lack of consequences for that. <laughs> it, it almost surprises me that at the end of the movie, like, you know, the, the principal of the, what was it called, conservatory doesn't walk in and say, Well, Daniel, I've talked to the people at Juilliard, and they say you can be part of it, from the from your place at the institution tell me why your shirt was in her bed and then he goes on to say you're busted that was a bad line that I'll admit I mean the, Melville did the best he could in, in delivering it but that was a bad line and it's like, you're not allowed to talk about my father. You don't have the right. And he really does go to the principal. And, you know, and, and she tried, you know, maybe you should take a few weeks leave. And, you know, and, and he won't, you know, I'll call the police and tell them you're covering for him. I don't want your help. I don't want anybody's help. You know, it's, it is this, this isolation thing where if, if, you know, yeah, if everybody betray him, he's fed up with this world, and it's, yeah.
And now he's seeing other people laughing at him. Again, no way those people are actually laughing at him in, in the situation. It's just, that's in his head. That's clearly to the viewer because we understand. But the whole movie is in, you know, the, not in his head, but seen through his eyes. So there, you know, and, and over the course of the film, and especially when dealing with Sophie, just a little bit more, like, it gradually it gets to be more and more, yeah, like, more, more and more like they don't, like he's being rejected, like the world is rejecting him. And the, you know, the, the bird corpse crawling with maggots, it's going a little too far. It, excuse me, it doesn't fit with the rest of the film, but, yeah, it, it feels like that if they really wanted to also make, like, a full-on horror movie, didn't they? And Daniel follows Pierre and Sophie in the car on his bike. And he's, he's smashing the car. Even if he doesn't care if he does, or maybe he even wants to hurt Pierre, Sophie is in there. He might hurt her, but he's that furious. And, you know, I was going to ask where he found that ideal smashing pipe, but they are right by a construction yard, so, you know, that must be it. What do you want to talk about? Are you with Pierre? Bad start, Dan. You need help, and finally she puts the distance between them that makes sense for someone violent. And I get that, you know, this time he was violent, you know, almost towards her. So, you know, but still, I mean, that easily could... If someone recut the movie to make it that after he comes back from prison, after the bouncer scene, he walks up to her apartment and rings it, and she says, "You know, I, you're, you're scaring me. I, you to, you know, you need help." That would still make a lot of sense. You wouldn't feel like, "Whoa, that's a bit." No, that, that's, that's a perfectly natural reaction to someone. Yeah. So, so, to, when when you see someone be so violent. And, you know, the, the mother said, you know, you're just as sick in your head as your father. And again, yeah, that's, that's what he hears. You know, in, in reality, she probably said something like, you know, you, I, th I think you have your father's problems or something. But, you know, really, when you, think, when, when you go back and look at the start of the film, the way they talk to each other, it really doesn't seem like she would actually say to him, to his face, you're just as sick in your head as your father. That just doesn't, but, but that's when he hears her say, you know, your father was a madman, which, you know, she probably said that or something really close to it. That's what he hears. He hears, and you're a madman too. And, you know, he's strangling her and saying, I hate you, and just, it's, it's so, I, I, it feels like that's, that's the result of all these years of pent up rage. You know, I mean, this might have been there since he was eight and since he felt like she abandoned him. And it is, I'm sorry, parents, don't take a long trip away from your kid, okay? It's, it's gonna feel super like you just rejected them. It just, it, like when 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 your offspring is in an, in their adult years and they understand something like that, you know, sure. But a kid is just gonna see. So they don't want me anymore, I guess. But yeah, you know, probably to some extent that was there since he was abandoned at eight. And yeah, you know, the him alone with his father for five years. It's yeah, uh, it's. It's, it's like with, with divorce. It's hard for there not to get to be some resentment of the person who left. Or, you know, in, in the case of divorce, sometimes it was forced out. But, yeah, you know. And, 
and yeah, the the whole scene, you know, and and she runs off, and he's banging on the door, and she calls the police. Yeah, there's no doubt. The director and or writer definitely watch and love the piano teacher. It's yeah, that's that is one of the the later scenes in that film, and yeah, it's and again, it doesn't it doesn't feel like they just wanted to redo that scene because again, it it works. It fits with the the relationship. He, you know, when when there's there's some anxiety between. You know, he he feels like you know it's you know oh she's traveling, but oh wait nope she will actually be able to to watch him perform and oh she did write down the right time and everything like he's not he's not saying it but he's basically almost thinking like you can't even make time to hear me perform you didn't even write down the right time you know he sees in you wrote you wrote noon that's not. I'm not playing at noon, and then they go on with it. Oh wait, no, here it is, eight o'clock in the evening. Okay, fair. You know, it's it's, yeah, you know, and and at that time he doesn't have anyone else, so he doesn't, he can't say that. He can't say, I can't believe you don't care more about it than than this. But once he's been with Sophie and he's felt like she cared, but then she stopped caring. Now it's come to the to the surface. And you know, we see him smashing his left hand on the piano. I I guess it's like he's connecting the piano tam to the madness, you know, that of himself and of his father. Hi Daniel, stay away from her. And again, why does Pierre talk with Daniel? By this this was you know, I watched this with my father back you know, it was two thousand nine, I think. Both of us, this was such a huge problem we have. Why does Pierre talk with Daniel by himself after the car attack? I'm not saying he wouldn't still want to help, but why trust him like that? And then, you know, then he actually turns his back on him. I'm sorry, just, I don't, I don't buy it. Pierre is smarter than that. We've seen that in, earlier in the movie. He doesn't, yeah, he's, he's, he's a fairly pragmatic person earlier on, you know, Juilliard, well, if you work really hard, I'll train you. You know, he's not, yeah, he's not a complete moron, and suddenly he's acting like a complete moron. Again, obviously not saying that he, like, brought it on himself or something, but I'm just saying, you know, and yeah, he, he comes and he tells her, she called me because she's scared. She doesn't want to be alone up there. You know, the moment that he sees, first off, if he knows that she's scared and Daniel's there, why does he come alone? Second off, the moment he sees Daniel standing there by himself, yeah, why doesn't he, like, like, hypothetically, let's say he immediately turned around and ran back to his car, which were, it would make sense for him to have come in his car because he's got, you know, arms full of, like, stuff he, he bought, which, I guess she's, she didn't buy anything to, it really, it's it's there so he can have something to put down to turn away from Daniel. Well, yeah, he puts it down and then he turns away from Daniel to pick it back up so that there's that. Because if he didn't turn around and we just see Daniel pick up the rock and hit him, then it would be completely unbelievable. But, yeah, still. And, you know, he says, you're imagining things, which is probably not a very appealing thing to be told if you're someone who may or may not, in fact, be imagining things. And you know, he said, you know, don't let a girl who doesn't matter ruin your life. And again, thinking about it, yeah, probably that's what Daniel hears, but not what Pierre actually said. And, you know, Daniel bashes his skull in, and the blood spurt is effective, but again, it's excessive. It feels like it's out of a different movie. Again, like... A full-on horror movie or perhaps an action movie with yeah just it it does it's it goes too far I'm not saying there shouldn't have been any blood spurt but it's like I mean his face is just yeah so much so much blood and it's just it's it's too much it it feels like operatic it's yeah and he can you know 
where's my mom? You know, it's, it's, yeah. And we see her visit him at the institution and, you know, I'm going away, I'll miss you. I'll admit that the ending, you know, maybe not the best, but ending it on a POV shot, and this is a literal, actual POV shot, and a slightly sustained one at that. You know, when things only really began with the POV E shot of her in the elevator, that's just right. And over the end credits, the trailer song is played, you know, with the, you know, play till the wheels come off or something. I'm not sure what the song's called. Yeah. Tried to briefly find out, but didn't. And, you know, we, we never... It's never, like, completely... Yeah, I suppose that covers that. Yeah, I was gonna go into the, the man's shirt that he sees in her bedroom, but really, yeah, no, it just, it didn't exist. It's just, there, it was something he saw, just like, you know, others' hands on her legs, and yeah. Characters. Oh, crap, that was 45 minutes in those. Guess I shouldn't be surprised. How they end up in these. I've seen male protagonist confront female romantic partner with his suspicions of her cheating on him at a show where he's performing for a crowd in at least one other Danish film, in that case, a short film. And yeah, both of them being about this performer who suspects his partner of cheating. I guess several guys who directed films here in Denmark just really, really like the idea of that scene. Maybe maybe it's like a famous scene from a, a big movie and I just I forget that movie or I haven't watched or something. I mean it's it's dramatic certainly. And and Daniel thinking Sophie's cheating on on him with Pierre is set up and followed through on very nicely. A lot of people have a close relationship with someone they work with and never cheat on their partner with them, but the partner will often suspect it. And to be fair to the partners, a lot of the time people do cheat on their partner with someone like that. And and you know Daniel starts to suspect that Pierre is trying to make Daniel look bad or quit the music in order to win Sophie from him and he represents greater skill and experience and a lot of women are attracted to the more experienced established men and you know, early on Daniel's practically stalking Sophie to find out how to be with her find some connection they can share and then for a little while it seems safe but then the problems start arising from his obsession and starts stalking or following her again now Jealousy. And this is again some stuff I found on Wikipedia. Communicative responses. Let's see. And yeah, so three critical functions in a romantic relationship reducing uncertainty, maintaining a repair in a relationship, and restoring self esteem. And yeah, this gets very detailed. Let's see. Yeah, different communicative responsive responses. Uh, you know, you've got avoidance, denial, and let's see. Decreasing affection is among the, th and he does start to, you know, early on he's very loving and tender towards her, but then later it does, yeah, he becomes more. And, let's see. I suppose I suppose that's what 
and I actually already talked about all my problems, so skipping that one, going directly to critics users. And again, to clarify, I did already read this. Helps that I watched the movie before this, but this is a review I found with spoilers. Now, and I'm just going to quote directly. It starts promising, but lacks clever scenario. I'm not entirely sure, but there's, yeah, some. We really start promising with a depressing atmosphere around talented piano student Daniel, who's also giving a hint about his feelings and how his psychology will be. His unhappiness, shyness around the audience and the girls, tainted relation with the mother, and suppressed feelings about his father's death, suicide due to his mental problems. The first part of the movie has a coherent screenplay, makes you root for the depressed emotions and the happiness of finding love. Sweet Sophie. All these end when the hero starts. The suspicion and envy for the girlfriend feels kind of fake and enforced in the scenario that even though he's so explicitly dictating about his jealousy and doubts about the girl's fidelity and her relationship with his piano teacher, Sophie keeps on stuff that will provoke him, such as flirting dances with the teacher or hanging out with him, even though they had no contact before contact point except Daniel before, which is you know part of the no consequences problem. Yeah, I do kind of have to agree that is. Yeah, and I'm, again, some of it, the, the, like, the, the, the way he reads it, the way Daniel reads it, is clearly colored by, yeah, I mean, he is, he is imagining things to be worse than they are, but they were still dancing, and it does seem like, yeah, why, why did she, why did she do that when, and just, if, if she, even if she, if, you know, when, when he confronts her about that, she says, you know, you, you don't, only you, you don't control me. I, that's, that's a, that's a natural response to him being that way towards her. But if she feels that way, then why does it take him confronting her about the dancing after all the stuff he's already said to elicit that response? And it's, again, you, you would kind of expect that she leave him before the concert. And I I get, you know, maybe she's like saying, you know, she doesn't want to ruin the concert for him. But if that's it, then why does she dance with Pierre? It's just, again, I'm not saying she's wrong to do it. You know, it's it, Daniel is out of line about it. But, yeah, at the, at the end of the day, it just it doesn't quite work. And... Yeah, beginning as a drama and continuing as a psycho thriller movie, psychology thriller movie. The end is a cliche, lovers are apart. And. Yeah, and he ends by saying, except for some aches in the screenplay, it's still a good movie, especially if you're somehow related to Scandinavia. And that was all I wrote. But, yeah. Still, amazing movie, and just. Yeah, I cannot believe it took me this long to to rewatch it. But honestly, for a while, I had trouble remembering the name. And yeah, you know, I, given that I don't, I think did I eventually find it through Dijon Kuchik, or did I maybe forget that he was in it? I'm not sure. I was a big fan of him in 2009. I f I forget. But anyway really thrilled to be able to watch it again and yeah I, I know it doesn't always come through in these videos but I do really love talking about these things even the the one you know this is a case where I also love the the movie itself but I do also mostly love talking about the ones that I really couldn't stand it's it's only when like it really bored me like taken three or something that it's like you know Taken 2 is many things, but it's not quite boring. It certainly isn't boring like Taken 3 is. But, yeah. And with that, I will see you in a week.